Till now, we have seen the stator and we have seen the thing that the rotating magnetic field is produced. Now, uh, coming to the point that how does the induction machine rotate? The induction machine actually rotates because of there is a slight difference between uh, the velocity of the uh, rotor and the rotating magnetic field. Actually, the rotating magnetic field which is produced is the synchronous speed at which uh, my magnetic flux is rotated, which is generated by N S. And S stands for synchronous speed. Now, we have seen that this is the actual machine and uh, we are having some poles over here. This is pole pair 1, this is pole pair 2 and this is the pole pair 3. And I have the rotor inside. But obvious likewise rotor, uh, of the DC machine, we have the conductor placed on the periphery of the armature or the rotor actually. So that is called the armature now and the rotor. I have a rotor and what obvious this rotor will be having a length L. And uh, we have seen one more thing that uh, suppose my flux is moving anti-clockwise right now in this way and what happens that flux is passing through this gear gap and cuts this stationary conductor. So we have studied two formula F is equals to B I L and we have studied one more formula in our elementary classes that E is equals to B L B sin theta and here also sin theta will come. So F is the force on which the uh, force on the conductor, B is the magnetic uh, flux density, I is the current flowing in this conductor, L is the length of the conductor. Again B L here is the B is the magnetic flux density, L is the length of the conductor, B is the velocity by which the conductor is actually moving. So once electric, uh, magnetic flux passes through the air gap and cuts the stationary magnetic uh, stationary conductor, but obvious an EMF is generated in it. And once the EMF is generated, and if it is given a path so that a current flows in it, then if this current flows in it, then due to this a force is generated, and this force is in the same direction in which my magnetic field is moving. Why? Because of the reason that everything on this world as we know that uh, wants to be on the minimum potential. Now the thing is that when an EMF is generated, if the conductors or the rotor of the induction machine is short circuited, then I have a path I have a written path for my uh, uh, current to flow. So this current starts flowing in the conductor. Now this current also produces a magnetic flux and which actually wants to oppose the magnetic flux of this uh, station, stator. And a force is generated as I already said, a force F is in the this direction F is because of the reason that it wants that there should not be any flow of a current in the conductor. So how the current will not be having the current, uh, how the conductor will not have, be having the current? This current should be zero. My uh, uh, requirement when I want my rotor to be uh, on the minimum potential is that my current should be zero. And how the current is actually uh, building up because of this EMF. 
and how why this emf is building up because of this velocity now if this velocity is the relative velocity this velocity is actually the relative velocity between the magnetic flux of the stator and the rotor so at the starting when the rotor is not moving at that point if my speed ns if this flux is having the speed of ns minus of my conductor speed or my rotor speed right now when the it is stationary it is zero so now the thing is that we want the force to be zero so that if this force is zero means i don't have any current i don't have any current means i don't have any emf in that i don't have any emf it means that the velocity is zero at that time and then at that time it will be at the minimum uh, potential so my conductor will try to move in the same direction to limit this as to uh, limit this as zero means my conductor or my rotor would like to uh, uh, run at the speed of ns so that the relative velocity between with the mmf of the stator and the rotor is zero if this is zero then emf is also again zero and this if, if this emf is zero then my current is going will be as zero so no force will be produced on this rotor so that is the main cause of rotation of my induction motor in the same direction as my uh, magnetic flux is rotating in the same direction now the motor wants that the speed of the rotor should be ns and if suppose if suppose it is a hypothetical situation that uh, induction motor runs just below the uh, uh, we know uh, we know this thing that the uh, induction motor doesn't work on the speed of uh, synchronous that is it, 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 uh, it the rotor never attains the speed of synchronous uh, because of the reason that if the rotor attains the speed of if this is the rotor speed if this rotor speed attains the speed uh, attains the uh, speed of a synchronous uh, magnetic flux then what will happen this ns will be again zero the relative velocity between the mmf and the rotor will be zero at that time if my rotor is rotating at the synchronous speed at that time there will be not be any velocity relative velocity at that time no emf will be generated and since no emf will be generated so no current will be generated at that time and no force will be there and then at that time my motor will trying to stop but what happens that this never catches the speed of a synchronous speed it is almost somewhat to the relative speed but this is not all zero this is at a finite value up till and until there is a relative speed between the flux and my the rotor then there will be the relative velocity between them which is will be a finite quantity and if the finite quantity is coming over here then i'll be having a generation of emf at that time and if generation of the emf is there then i have will be having some force at that time so at the starting a lot of force is coming because the relative velocity between my uh, mmf stator mmf and the rotor is very high at that time emf generated is very high at that time the current is also very high so my f that is the force is also very high as soon as my motor starts picking up the speed at that time the relative velocity between them uh, the uh, flux of the stator and the rotor is now becoming low because this is a fixed quantity this one is fixed my motor is tending to speed up now so it the finite quantity which was coming the resultant of resultant velocity between the rotor and the stator 
is now coming down. Now since this is coming down, what of yes, my EMF will be coming down. And if the EMF will be coming down, at that time a current will be coming down. And at that time a force will be coming down. So this way, at the starting, I get a lot of EMF, it means I, I get a lot of current at the starting. And the starting torque, starting force is also high. So this is very important uh, regarding <coughs> objective type questions that at the starting force is very high. We can write it in a very compact way so that we will be able to uh, learn it at the starting condition. And the running conditions. These are the two conditions we will be discussing. At the starting, if we talk about the relative velocity, what is the relative velocity? At the starting, relative velocity is very high. At the running condition, the relative velocity is very low. We have seen this formula, both the formulas. At the starting, my EMF, since the relative velocity is high, at the starting, the starting condition of my EMF would be very high. Again, so at the running condition, when the my motor has picked the, its normal uh, speed, at that time EMF generation will be very low. Now coming to the current, at the starting, since the EMF is very high, the current would be very high at that point. And when, set, yeah, when my motor has attained a normal speed, uh, the rated one, then at that point my current would be very much low. <coughs> now coming to the force. At the starting, when my EMF is very high or I can say again, when the rel relative velocity between my uh, MMF of the stator as well as the conductor of the rotor is very high, at that point EMF will be very much high. So my current would be high, so my force would be high. So the force would be high at the starting or I can force or I can say the top torque of the induction machine at the starting is very high. Likewise, when the relative velocity goes low, EMF also goes low, when the current also goes low, then my force also goes low. In the running condition, the torque is very low. So this is very important regarding the induction machine. And one more thing which I have already said that if, there, if the rotor of the synchronous machine happens to rotate at synchronous speed then there will not be any velocity, there will not be any EMF generated, there will not be any current at that time, so there will not be any force at that time. So this is very important point regarding objective type. So we should learn this thing, we should understand this thing very clearly that at the, that the induction machine rotor never uh, rotates at the speed of synchronous one. It always rotates at the speed of which is just lower than the synchronous speed and what else we can uh, find out by this is that, that the current at the starting is very high. You can see that the starting current of the machine is very high although the machine is uh, self-starting but the current is very high. We have seen one more thing that the force or the torque at the starting is very high. So induction machine are used where the high torque is required where our three phase power is uh, available and we have uh, three phase AC power. We will be using the uh, uh, high torque machine, uh, which is an induction machine. Uh, if the principle, if the uh, requirement, if the application suits the machine. Now, <coughs> coming to uh, the rotor, types of rotor. <coughs>
as uh, just now we've seen that the rings and rings there are end rings in the rotor because of the reason that there are two types of machines uh, two types of rotor uh, in the induction machine one is called the spiral cage Another is called the boom rotor or the sifting rotor. There are two types of the rotor which are normally being used in the uh, <coughs> uh, my induction machine is one is the spiral cage rotor, another is the boom rotor. Now we will be starting with the uh, spiral cage rotor, what type of spiral cage rotors are actually. <coughs> spiral cage rotors are like this, this is the shaft and the conductors are like placed like this way or at a, some angle to the rotor actually and these conductors are having uh, can be seen over here these conductors will be here at both ends at both ends I will be having the faces of the conductor and these conductors at both the ends are shorted by a end ring. These are shortened here, shortened by the end rings. Requirement of the end ring. What is the requirement of the end ring now? Since I say that EMF is generated due to the relative velocity between the MMF and the uh, MMF of the stator and the rotor, but obvious the current will would like to flow in the uh, 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 rotor. If the current is not there, then the motor will not run because no force will be generated at that time. So I need to have a return path for my conductor that is the, so that my current flows in the conductor. So these end rings are actually giving the return path to my conductors so both the and both the ways both the uh, side of the rotor are shorted by the conductor so that the current can flow in the uh, conductors another part comes is the if these are not there then no uh, emf will be there no doubt but there will not be any current because there is no written part for them and if there is no written part then there will not be any force in that. So the rotor, uh, motor will not move. Now coming to the another part of the rotors is the wound rotor type or the slip ring type. Wound rotor type are having the almost the similar construction but the thing is that it will be having another thing that for since we have seen one thing that the current in the uh, starting position is very high so at that uh, we need to have the limit limiter in the current so i could not place my uh, uh, external resistance or external circuitry in the square edge of the rotor because these are shortened even here no external resistance can be added in the square cage type but moon rotor gives that advantage to put some external resistance to limit the current or the speed control whatever is uh, uh, my requirement. So the wound rotor will be having uh, external resistance in it so that the starting current of the machine can come down. 